Uh, Miles has been bemused by my interest in this uh, Korean band BTS. I don't know if you paid any attention to what to his links, but the significance of it is for me because I'm mainly working on the work of uh, Carl Jung, Dr. Carl Jung. The significance of it is that they are spreading around uh, mental health information around the world, which has been a taboo. So their discography, their uh, music, and all of their albums seem to focus on mental health issues and human psychological transformation issues. And so almost out of the sight of everyone, I mean, I only discovered them six weeks ago myself, and that was because a Jungian analyst that I know has two Korean uh, adopted children who were quite interested in them. And she started to talk about it and the fact that their most recent album is based on Dr. Murray Stein's book, Jung's Map of the Soul, an introduction. And so their current album, which was just issued on April the 12th, is called Map of the Soul Persona. And it's been in the top 10 of the Billboard 200 for the last month, ever since it was issued. It was, it was number one in 70 countries, 70 countries, on uh, four hours after it was released. And the significance of it, I think, is that we can never get mental health teaching really in the public schools adequately to make a difference or it would take hundreds of years because of the various interest groups that would be objecting to it. But because BTS now has 80 million fans around the world and in every country and in every age group, uh, they are educating the world for us and and there's there are these interactions among the various BTS members that's really huge and and so that's why I'm very very excited about the connections that they're making to mental health. Dr. Jung was the son of a reformed pastor and he came in a generation after Friedrich Nietzsche, who had declared in Thus Spake Zarathustra that God is dead. That's what Nietzsche said. And he said that primarily because in the 500 years after, uh, let's say, the beginning of the 16th century, uh, the scientific method had punched holes in all the myths of religion, all the narrative stories, and uh, you know things like virgin birth and that sort of thing, and so it's caused a very deep problem in humanity in the sense of stages of consciousness that we need to re reach to realize uh, what it is that is happening to us, and so. Dr. Stein, in his book, lays out uh, actually seven levels of consciousness, uh, and I'll just run through them quickly just so you are oriented to what my thinking is. Okay, the first stage is when you're born, uh, you don't know you're separate from your parents, and you're in what's called participation mystique, which is a primitive um, psychology where you you don't know the difference between yourself and everything else but when you're three years old you say no for the first time your ego starts to emerge and then you project outside yourself your parents okay as gods so daddy is the best daddy in the world and that sort of thing then the third stage is where you realize in your teen years maybe that your mother and father don't walk on water and then you project it out on a, a religion or 
a great person or an ism, something uh, becomes your god, even if it's materialism. And then in the fourth stage, which is the modern stage that they've delineated, we get into this Nietzsche phase where uh, we don't we don't believe these things are true, and so we lose our faith. And then in the fifth stage, you go beyond that, and often that comes with an actual religious experience of some sort, some experience that tells you that yes, there is something more, and you don't you actually don't need a creed to help you with that. You know, okay, so there's a famous video of Dr. Jung being asked, do you believe in God? And he says, well, I have no need to believe, I know. And so that's the fifth stage. The sixth stage is a stage which relates to synchronicity and the fact that there, there is cause and effect in the universe, but there are also a-causal things that happen that we can't predict. For example, this very interview, where if you had asked me six weeks ago whether I knew who Paul Hellyer was and why it was important, I would say no. And But by synchronicity, somehow I connected up with Miles, who lives in Alberta, Canada, and he connected me up with you. So we're now having this conversation that six weeks ago neither one of us could have predicted, and there would there would be no causal connection there. And then the seventh level is is a higher level that is, I don't well understand yet because I, I've just been getting into viewing it in this way. It's frequently recognized in the East in Kundalini Yoga. And actually, Dr. Jung did write a book and give several lectures on Kundalini Yoga, but I've always shied away from them uh, up until now. So I'm currently reading his book on Kundalini Yoga to understand the seventh stage, but that's basically where I'm coming from. What's, what's involved in the seventh stage? In, in the seventh stage, it, you spiritually become one with the universe, I think, something like that. As you probably know, Kundalini envisions energy coming up in your body beginning at you know below your waist and working its way up and there's there's a a phase it, they envision it as a snake right as a serpent coming up and gradually spiraling up so you have more and more consciousness uh, for example you know when we're young we aren't conscious of things and gradually we get more and more consciousness and that's why uh, these stages happen actually. Uh, for example, I can tell you something right now that that you are not conscious of but once I tell you about it, it will you will be conscious of it and it will be a further connection between you and me. Okay, and that connection is that I served in the U.S. Marine Corps to Lieutenant Colonel, and uh, I was an artillery officer. And I read in your biography that you were a, an artillery gunner during World War II, and that connection, that connection is something that we have between us, and we could not describe it. Okay, in other words, it. It's, it's an experience, it's a psychological experience that both you and I know about and we couldn't convey it to anybody else. I mean, I, I couldn't possibly tell Miles, for example. Once a gunner, always a gunner. Right. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> and, uh, and once a Marine, always a Marine. So that's an example of getting consciousness. So the human species is also being getting much more and more consciousness because I heard a statistic one time that said in the 15th century the average Englishman 
only got as much information in a lifetime as exists in the New York Times Sunday edition, one edition today. And so most human beings didn't have much information about what was going on in the world. They didn't have any consciousness of it. But now, you know, as, as the scene both behind you and behind me indicates, we have millions of books and so there's the possibility of gaining consciousness, but then how do we implement it? And as you indicate, it's, it's extremely important that we get these levels of consciousness to raise. I mean, Dr. Jung envisioned uh, the whole human species raising to a new level of consciousness. That's what... It's a process, from what I understand, but it's going to be a slow process. Yes, yeah. Dr. Jung thought it would be 600 years, but of course, he died in 1961, so uh, he was not so aware of computers and what their availability and the implications of them would be. Mm -hmm.